Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with Brian Engelstein Hi. and Stephen Bonacore from Stronghold Games looking at The Fog of War by Jeff Engelstein. Yes. Which you might know something about this game. Yes, well, considering um, you've probably helped with a playtesting. Uh, we've been and working on this game. This. I've been working on this game with my dad for 14 years now. I mean, he was okay. you were like but a, you a did real not get child design credit back on it. It's a long story filled with size. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, I am not a I am not a designer on this game. Okay. But you're a design consultant. But I'm a design consultant on Developer. this game. Developer. Um, That's right. Design consultant. We'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, this is the Fog of War. It is a two-player uh, World War II game mm -hmm. with a focus on uh, scheming and tactics um, over moving blocks on a map. Okay. So, um, unlike most World War II games, um, this is a very high-level view of Europe, as you can probably see from the board I just ruined. That's right. Um, with the playtest components, this is final this artwork, is a final everything board. else... Everything else is uh, not. Not, is final. not final. Not okay. final. Um, the, uh, the focus of the game is about being sneaky over just overwhelming your opponent with lots of, uh, lots okay. of units. Okay. Um, so, uh, so the key mechanic to the game is that instead of having uh, blocks or anything, you have a deck of cards. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there are several different types of cards. And on your turn, you alternate taking turns, you get a hand of three. Okay. That come in various different flavors. That's right. Which I have, uh, I have here. So you have sea units, you have land units, you have air yeah, units. Yes. So you have, uh, you have land units, sea units. And you've units. got the ghost of troops past. So, uh, so that is actually a decoy. Uh -huh. That's a, that's a dummy. Remember, okay. he said it's all about bluffing. And so what like you're that. going to do okay. is you don't actually just play these cards to attack you. Okay. What you do is you have this lovely wheel which is called your Operation Wheel. Not official artwork. Not official <laughs> artwork. This is probably the roughest piece of artwork we have. Okay. Although I did just see the final artwork and it is lovely. It is really cool. Um, and so on your turn, you collect your cards, and if you want to, you can start a new operation. Okay. So you can attack anywhere next to on the map. You can see the Allies control Paris and Britain, the Axis row in Berlin. Anywhere adjacent to where you are, you can attack. Okay. Um, so you also control the move. neutrals, don't you? you? Also, no, you don't. You don't control the neutrals. Uh, they can come in through other forms. I will shut up. Okay. Um, <laughs> so publishers, you don't know your game. So on your when you want to start an operation, you take cards from your hand. If it's attacking a land space, if I wanted to attack the Balkans, I can take air units and ground units. Mm -hmm. For the water, it's sea units and air units. And I put them as many up to um, I believe it's up to two on the wheel alongside, so I put them on the wheel face down, alongside if, if both players have one of these decks of all of the locations on the board. Okay. So if I was attacking the Balkans, I don't have the Balkans pulled out here, uh, but they're nicely color coded. Let's That'd say we're attacking. Uh, yes, they're also numbered. The Balkans. So you put the Balkans card in there. Okay. Um, now you have, you have so started now we have an operation. started an operation attacking the Balkans. Okay. So when it first gets played, you play whatever spot says new up. Uh, and you can't actually just do that. You have to wait because you got to assemble your troops, right. get everyone together. So then, uh, next turn, you get to turn this little wheel one space. Okay. And if you wanted to, you could start a new operation here. Okay. But you can see you still can't attack. Okay. Then, you turn it again, and now you can attack. But the defender is going to get a plus one in combat. You're starting the operation a little early. Because you're, you're, launch, you're rushing it a little bit. Right. Then you get two more turns where everything is even. And on the following turn, you get a plus one because you have prepped this operation for months. Okay. And, and you then, have to do it or else you're going to lose it. And then it. if you don't do it by then, it's gone. Right. So you can let miss it, the opportunity you can let it to attack yes, the ball. Yes, you the opportunities to attack the ball. But the question is, is uh, you, you may have, is why would you have to wait to attack? And the answer is, is that at the end of any one of your turns, or whenever you play one of these intel cards, okay. your, you get to look. Your opponent. Your, you get to look at one of your opponent's operations. Okay. But you don't get to look at the whole thing. You get to randomly look at half the cards rounded down. Something like that. It is half the cards rounded down. I actually okay. know that. So, <laughs> but the thing is, is that when you look at a card in an operation, I get to look at this card secretly. 
So you don't get to know what card I saw in your operation. Okay. Did I see the one attack that you put in? Did I see the three attack you put in? Did I see where you were attacking? Okay. And that is where these dummies come in, these zeros. These are dummy soldiers, wooden tanks. Okay. Or just it's just um, the projection of like you've you've seated False bad intel, intel or seated yeah. bad to the enemy. Intel. And that happened all the time in World War II. They yes, tried to see bad intel while being secret about the, the real stuff. Exactly. Okay. So if I build an operation, it's say I'm the Axis and I want to attack Russia, I could start a big I'm going to attack Paris campaign, where I play the Paris card and like six dummies. But the okay. question is, did he see the dummies? Did he just see Paris? What's he looking at? What can he? Fi what has he? Or did learned? he not even look at it? But it's a huge yeah. operation that he thinks I'm about what to did, launch. What, did, right. what has he learned about my operation? I don't get to know. So that's why you may want to rush your operation because did they learn that I'm attacking Paris? And suddenly, in addition, you can place your cards in these spaces on the outside of the board uh, to defend them. Okay. So. If I'm planning on attacking the Balkans, and you see that I'm attacking the Balkans, and suddenly you put like three cards face down in the Balkans defense space, suddenly I'm going to think twice about attacking the Balkans. Okay. However, maybe you put three dummies in the Balkan space, because you were just trying to stop me from doing it. So it's a lot of play and counterplay okay. with what did they see, how much can I risk. And I assume that when you actually start operations, you can choose to just do one or many. You can start one a turn. One a turn, that's it. That's it. You can begin a new operation. However, you can chain operations, so well, I could that's have... That's what I meant. When no, you, so when you, you can do one a turn. So, But if this operation was attacking the Balkans, next turn I could make an operation attacking Kiev. All right. So I'm just assuming that this is going to work and then go to Kiev. Okay. But you could only on a turn... Only you can only start one on a turn. Start one. Okay. Um, and, and launch one. On and launch one on a turn. Okay. Can't launch all of your operations at once. Okay. Um, and the, the game is going to be played over five years, the five, six yes. years of so, World War II, so from 1940 uh, through 1945. You're going to have a deck of cards, and um, you're going to go through your whole deck, putting it on. Afterwards, mm -hmm. it becomes winter, becomes harder to attack. So if you want to, you can blitz through your deck, make it harder for your opponent to launch operations. Okay. Uh, once both players have gone through their deck, the year ends. Um, we advance by a year, and everybody is allowed to buy cards. Okay. Based um, on your based industrial... on your industrial production, which is based on um, you can see the little factories on the location cards. The so total number of you factories you spent? control gives you production. Okay. Uh, in addition, you can use that production to buy. You can use it to buy new units from your deck, um, which come in uh, depending on uh, the year and what side you are. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as new research cards, new boats, whatever you want to buy. Okay. Um, in addition, the Axis can buy victory points towards winning the game. Okay. So you may have noticed that the other thing on the production cards are these little wreaths. Mm -hmm. the, uh, laurels, they're actually called. Um, and those are victory points. So at the end of every year, the Axis scores one point for every uh, laurel that they have under their control. And their goal is to hit 80 points. Okay. If the Axis can hit 80 points by 1945, they win the game. Okay. If not, the Allies win. And All I've right. always seen it be very, very close. It's usually scrambling for a few, uh, a few points at the end of the game. Okay. There also has a lot of other really interesting thematic things that, like, the U.S. is not in the war in the beginning, so you. It has to. You have to wait until 1942, and all of a sudden, the U.S. enters the war. Russia enters the war in 43, and stuff like yes. that. That's the, the unless you attack Russia, right. then unless a, you attack them, boom, then yeah, they're then in. a so, whole bunch of cards just go into the Allied deck, and suddenly they can do all kinds of crazy right. things. So it's not a okay. good idea to attack them too early. <laughs> either country. Um, okay. In addition, uh, I never actually. So combat is very simple. Um, it just involves um, totaling up the number of uh, number of unit of uh, numbers you have in the operation mm -hmm. against the numbers you have in your opponent's operation. Um, and the, th the, the interesting thing about combat is that the attacker needs to win by double. Okay. If the attacker doesn't double the defender's score, it's called a quagmire. You put one of these little quagmire tokens down. Okay. Because, uh, I don't know how much you've studied uh, World War II history, but it's very common for two armies to just get stuck, fighting for months, years even, uh, where nothing really happens. And then, what's going to happen is that while you're stuck in the quagmire, both sides are going to start eliminating units at random. Okay. Until eventually, either both sides are out of guys, or... You're double the defender. You're double the defender's value. In addition, once the quagmires happen, you can continue playing cards into 
affect the operation. Okay. So it becomes a question, do I just let it go? Do I keep, keep them here for a long time? Can I hold out till winter? And they can't, because if they're ever, if the attacker is ever lower than the defender, the attack ends and the defender right. loses. So can I hold out till winter when I'll get that plus two bonus? And, um, or plus one bonus and, uh, and start doing bonus damage. So it is, even though it doesn't, uh, it doesn't seem super complicated, there is a lot of play to the combat system. Okay. Um, so uh, I believe that is, uh, that is basically it. That's everything. The innovative around. portion of the game, without a doubt, is is the sort fact the that you're. Programming it's a you know if you, if you think about um, games and, and and the way wars and, and you look at these things, this is yeah. grand strategic. You're looking at this at the right. highest level possible, launching operations and keeping things uh, secret or bluffing and things like that. Yes. It's a very high level view of the war, not tactical view of the war at all. Right. Yeah. And that's the innovation part of the game that you're going to be doing these launches of these starting operations and launching them and seeing if you can take over, over the um, uh, enough enough places so that the um, the Axis does not get to your 80 victory points by 1945. Or the Axis okay. does if you're playing the Axis. Right. Okay. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're very happy with the way it's uh, the way it's come together. This is a late October release at this point. Possibly okay. November, probably late October release. So it, we should have some games at Essen. Um, okay. So that'll be the first premiere of the game. All right. Thanks very much for the overview, Brian. Thanks. Steven? Thanks for having Thank me. You. Yeah. All right. Thanks, right. guys. Fog of War. The Fog, the fog, of, war. fog of War. With a T H E. The Fog of War. I said that. We only make games with. I have to do the box game. cover. The Dragon and Flag. There. The Fog of War. Is that? There's the box cover. Right there. It's, yeah, with a hand. Right with the hand, Like yeah. this, he's like about to move a tank or something. <laughs>